Why is it important for devotees to regularly go to places of pilgrimage? It's nice if devotees can go to places where the Lord has performed his pastimes um, because it helps us to appreciate that these activities have actually gone on in a particular place. So we associate the place with the pastime and it makes the pastime more real for us. Um, it's nice, if possible, to go regularly, but if one is able, that's the best. But if not, um, one should make some effort sometime in one's life, I think, uh, to come to these, what we consider sacred places, because they are places where the Lord connects with the world. When the Lord appears, he's called Avatara, he's descending into the world. And so one may ask, where does he descend? Well, he descends here in a particular place and he does particular activities, meets particular persons, does particular things in those places. And uh, this all serves our practice of remembering the Lord. Uh, smarana is part of our process of hearing, chanting, remembering, and serving the Lord. What is the proper state of mind and behavior we should cultivate while we are in the Holy Dham? Uh, like with everything, the mood should be one of humility. Uh, we are feeling some gratitude that we can be in these places and some uh, sense of wonder, perhaps, that uh, it's possible to be in the very place where the Lord has his pastimes, uh, to allow us to be open to the idea that not only the Lord did activities sometime in the past, but he's still doing them now. They're going on as we speak, as we, uh, as we visit these places. India has changed a lot since the first Westerners started visiting the holy places. In what ways do these changes influence our experience of the holy place? Uh, India has become more and more part of uh, the globalized world, uh, which means the commercialized world. Of course, this process started not just in recent years, but hundreds of years ago, and that's a long history. Uh, and one thing it's a positive effect is it makes travel to these places, well, relatively easy. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so the travel infrastructure is there. I must say, since I started coming to India, mm, the travel within India has not really improved that much, but Okay, some changes are there. Um, it means that more and more people are traveling, Indians are traveling, and their purposes, their motivations in going also to holy places is sometimes less than spiritual. And this makes for a challenge. Uh, devotees want to relish a spiritual atmosphere, but then there can be so much disturbance, especially pollution, odd, um, sound pollution is I think the worst problem. 
not just from the horns, from the cars and trucks and buses, but from the disco music, the cinema music, the uh, horrible, horrible, loud sometimes music that gets blasted all over the creation. Um, yeah, other changes. It's bringing, I suppose, the changes. It's bringing more uh, Westerners. Uh, we see huge effects in major places such as here, Mayapur and uh, Vrindavan Dam, in that uh, these places are becoming like um, construction centers. Um, Vrindavan is becoming a, like a, a suburb of Delhi. <laughs> so much construction goes on there. And uh, Mayapur is becoming a suburb of, uh, of Calcutta. Um, and that's just the way it is. <laughs> so to remember the Lord, despite all of this, I think this makes it all a bit more of a challenge. Can you describe one of your experiences in India in over 30 years of your traveling that was most interesting or in some way significant for you? Um, I've been traveling around Europe, uh, Europe, uh, India, uh, yeah, over the years, uh, visiting various temples, holy places, uh, highlights for me, in a way, remain uh, these places that are our favorites, despite the construction, Vrindavan and Mayapur. These are the places I like to come back to. Um, and uh, there are various adventures, traveling, misadventures that happen. Uh, but uh, hard for me to, you know, think of a very specific event at this time. Um, yeah. Um, we just had our Odisha Bengal Yatra, and that was very nice. <laughs> Why are the holy places in Odisha that we visited on this recent tour important for devotees to see? Well, these are places which are associated with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Lord Chaitanya took sannyas um, at a very young age, age 24, and then uh, he left from Katwa, where he took sannyas, and went to Puri. And he stopped at some places along the way. And uh, interesting events happened, especially the um, breaking of his danda, at Danda Banga. Uh, he heard stories about deities. When he went to Remuna, he uh, saw Kshir Chor Gopinath, and then he heard the story about Kshir Chor Gopinath and Madhavendra Puri. So we wanted to kind of live those moments, those experiences of uh, Lord Chaitanya's travel to, to Puri. And we, we sort of went in the opposite way uh, from how Lord Chaitanya went. As we started actually not even in Puri, we started in Bhubaneswara and then went to Puri and then from Puri headed gradually north. Whereas Lord Chaitanya came from the north and went uh, eventually to Puri. Um, but that's just sort of how it worked out for us. Uh, these places are uh, less visited. Puri, of course, everyone visits Puri, but between Puri and Mayapur, uh, not so many devotees are visiting. And so many years I wanted to see some of these places, and we decided, okay, let's go.
What was your favorite place that we visited during this tour? Favorite place? Well, in some ways, I suppose, Kshirchor Gopinath Raymuna. Very nice deity and um, very nice darshan. Uh, there seemed to be a quite relaxed atmosphere there. And the kshira, the kheer, is uh, super tasty. The kshir prasad. So we had a good time there. Um, it was nice to be at Dandavanga also. <laughs> Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 